Welcome back, Cracked fans. We are here live at the Atkins Tennis Center where we are joined by number one singles player for the Illini, All-American Alexander Kovacevic. Kova, thank you for joining me here in the booth. How are you doing today? Good. Yeah. Um, Pre-match, a little talk. Yeah, no, doing well. I feel like this is as good of a routine as any, right? This will get you loose certainly more than the warm-up exercises. We've all heard, I think for me, the most striking thing, this is just a random tangent, I apologize, but it's the same playlist every week. It's always, and it's the same order too. Yeah, um, and usually I have a say in the playlist, and (laughs) this year I wasn't sure whether I was coming back or not, so I didn't actually put any of my my songs in there. no. So it's all right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I know when, when, which song is coming, what time of the warm up it's coming. It's a good playlist. I agree. No. And they're, all of the songs are stuck in my head. But, anyways, to that being said, I know you guys are players of routine. So I appreciate you again doing this before the match. And when you come into today's match, you guys are coming off of an incredible weekend. You guys knocked off the Wolverines and gave yourself a shot at, you know, getting a share of the Big Ten regular season title. And just, you know, looking beyond that. When you look at last season's results, and it was such a tough start to your season, so many close matches just not going your way, to be in this position now one year later, uh, what's this season been like for you? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's been a little bit of a surprise, a little bit, um, just with how clinical we've been with a lot of the matches that we've won. Uh, it just, you know, it seems like we've really hit our stride, and we're just taking care of business week in and week out, which is amazing to see. Um you know, that's kind of the goal, uh, especially in a college team. You have so many different players that can play, you know, really well. But uh, what's most important is that they can consistently put out um, at least good enough. Each player can play good enough to where we're, you know, consist- consistently taking care of business each week. Um, no, and I- so that's something that this this year has been, you know, really evident to me specifically. Uh, and. Yeah, the team's been doing great. So mm-hmm. No, I've noticed that as well. It really does feel like every week it's, no, we're going to get to four points quickly. Yeah, you might get a set here. Yeah, you might take a singles point there, but we're going to be the first team to four. And, you know, we've talked about this a little bit off camera, but for our listeners who may not know this, you obviously have pro aspirations, and I'm sure there was very much an impulse after last season to just say, you know what, I think I'm ready to go pro. I've done the college thing long enough. And, you know, I know you and Brad talked, and he was like, just come play the National Indoor Weekend. Let's see what happens. Well, then we saw what happened. You guys knock off USC opening night, the defending champions. You guys have, you know, a tough match against Baylor the next day. But even without you, team uh, ends up beating Virginia. You guys end up beating Michigan last weekend. Again, just even before that, that kickoff weekend, what did that do in terms of your decision to come back? Did that you solidify it? You're like, nope, I'm here. Yeah, well, so, I mean... I I mean, not many people know really what happened behind the scenes of that whole, you know, Virginia thing where I left to go play a pro tournament. And and it wasn't at all a decision that I um, kind of thought through enough. And I didn't really, you know, I wasn't really thinking. I was just, you know, my plan all along was to come back for national indoors to play and, you know, help the team out. I didn't realize what that would mean and, and how, you know, attached I could be to the team after that. Um I watched that match from the airport, um, the Virginia match, and, and um, the second I saw the guys out there, I, I regretted not being there for that match. But obviously, looking back, I wouldn't have changed it. I wouldn't have been there, you know, just because, you know, it was so amazing to watch, and, and I was so inspired by the guys and, and proud of just the way that, um, you know, they fought and, and got got it done even, you know, without me there. Um, and then after that, I was like, you know what? Like, they want to do this. I want to do this. We're, we're going to do it. So uh, I really want to make this year special. And, and I was like, you know what? Um, I'm coming back, and, and I'm and I'm back. Uh, you know, there may be some really good pro opportunities, which I've already taken one since then. Um, but, you know, I've been talking through with the coaches and, and, my, and my teammates a lot more about, you know, uh, going through the details of those a lot more than, than I, than I w- was before. And, and, you know, we're all comfortable and, um, pretty, we see eye to eye with what I'm, what, what I'm doing and what they're, what the team's doing. And, you know, I'm all in with the team. Just, you know, I also have a lot of pro aspirations, as you said, and, 
I want to make sure I kind of can try to find a balance of both. Mm -hmm. And I think you've done an excellent job of doing that. And believe me, I want to talk about that Cleveland Challenger semifinal because I had the chance to be there and watch your run through the week. But, you know, again, looking back at your team, I think you're, what, 13-2, 14-2, 15-2, whatever it may be. The only two losses coming to Baylor and then an Ohio State match early in the season. You, You use the word belief. That national indoor weekend to go two and one to get a win, even when you weren't there. What did that do for the team's belief? And again, your two losses only on the year. I, I feel like you guys certainly believe you can do some special things this season. No, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, the beginning of the year is always a little, you know, uh, I guess I don't know what the word is, but choppy. Except, yeah, choppy. You, you don't really know what the actual best team in the <laughs> nation is, but to, you know. Uh, put up a fight against every single team, you know, here in, in the in the national indoors, and 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 show that you know, like we're part of that group of you know top teams. That that's the kind of belief that you kind of need. It's not you don't need to win every single match, but just to you know feel like you belong in the top top teams in the nation. Um, definitely something where you know you're you're hitting at the top teams, and and whether you're there yet or not, it's it's definitely like gives you the belief of okay, we can get there. If if it's not now, it's by may and uh yeah i mean i think a lot of our guys individually have a lot of belief in themselves uh you know seeps zeke you know i think they're undefeated still um Mm -hmm. i haven't played many matches but i feel pretty good about you know my chances against you're undefeated uh, as well you didn't want to say it i'll say it for you don't (laughs) worry well i mean i in no way do i do i feel like i you know can't be beaten but but i just you know we all feel we all have belief that we can take on any team in the nation, and, and uh, yeah, I mean that's all it is. Uh, every day, you know, we're, we're taking care of business uh, against any team that we we're, that you put in front of us, and, and if we win, we win. If we lose, well, you got to beat us. So, yeah, no, I yeah. completely agree with that. Obviously, you guys did that to my Wolverines. I was imploring you. I was like, go try to play Miami. Go yeah. do something <laughs> else. You don't have to be here this weekend. But uh, that was a fantastic win, and you guys have yourself in a position. I don't really know the rules of the Big Ten regular season title. No one seems to. So, you know, if you guys win out, certainly you will have earned a share of that, whether it's a three-way split, what we're doing, who knows. But, you know, I walk in, and we ha- we're here at the Atkins Tennis Center. Obviously, you see the 2003 National Championship banner. You were on a team, I think it was your sophomore year, 2018. I had the chance to be down in Winston-Salem. You guys make the quarterfinals that year, and I believe you were playing four singles on the team, maybe five at the time, and you guys lost to a Wake Forest team that would go on to win the national championship. And so, you know, obviously you've seen what a national championship team looks like. I know it starts with the Big Ten Conference, but in a COVID-related season, you're only going to get to play national matches twice this year, you know, at the national indoors where you guys were great, and then come NCAA tournament how focused are you guys how excited are you for that NCAA tournament and you know when you look at your level what do you think this team is capable of yeah so um I know that's a long question no I I, I'll try to dissect it um (laughs) as best as I can just with the 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 way we've felt about this season and with the COVID stuff so um to start obviously the beginning of the year showed us that we can compete with Mm -hmm. you know I guess the big tank can compete with the other teams in the nation which I think it's been pretty evident for a few years now with Ohio State and us, um, Michigan being, you know, I pretty top contend- <laughs> contenders at, 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 on the national level mm-hmm. with the rankings right now a little <laughs> little, <laughs> little weird. But, um, no, I, I definitely think uh, we're all super, super excited about the NCAA specifically because with this season, um, you know, at least I think it's the Big Ten is one of the only uh, conferences that, is allowing only only conference matches, um, and it's been a little. You know, we, this is a, this match today. It's going to be the third time that we play Wisconsin in about two months. Which you know, not saying it's not exciting just to play matches, but you know, of course, we'd like a little variety here <laughs> sure. and there, um, and just you know, wanting a shot against other teams that we're you know seeing around and and stuff. It, definitely, NCAs is something we're looking forward to. Obviously. In my time here, we haven't won the Big Ten or even a share of it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always been Ohio State kind of in the way and, and, and Michigan as well. So um, we're really trying to do that this year. Um, so we're definitely in no way you know, looking past the end of this Big Ten season and the NCAAs because we definitely want to you know, keep taking care of, bit of what we can control. Um, but, yeah, no, de- definitely NCAAs is something we're looking forward to. There's a lot of questions still to be answered about you know, hosting sites and, and all of that. And, but – at the end of the day, like 
Lake Nona is a great, great place to, to play. Um, I mean, I, I was there for the singles tournament a year and a half ago, and it was just an amazing experience just having, you know, people from all over there with the COVID stuff this year that might not be the same, but uh, definitely an exciting place to play, and, and I hope I can take the team. I mean, yeah. we can we can take the team there, and, and – It'll be, it'll be a good time. Oh, absolutely. Well, then, again, I, I want to talk to some of your other teammates. I don't want to take up too much of your time because yeah. you do have a match today, but just last few for you. And, you know, you have pro aspirations, obviously, and you, we've talked about that. But your freshman year, you got to play around a guy in Alex Vukic, who is now, I believe, top 200 in the world, certainly floating around it, qualified for Roland Garros last year. And, you know, Aaron Hiltzik, who had pro aspirations at the time, has since gone on to do other cool things. But... You know, for you to be exposed to that your freshman year and then, you know, to be now one of, regardless of the rankings, one of the top players undefeated still here, your senior season, what has college tennis done for your development? And, you know, certainly being around pros, I imagine that helped. Yeah. Um, what's interesting about college is, is it's very um, concentrated. Like you have players at the top of college that you don't realize how good they can they are in the pro mm-hmm. scene of things. Um I remember watching Vukic play Cameron Nori. Um, I think it was my sophomore year at TCU, and we were watching him play a ten-point tiebreak like you would in a, you know, USTA consolation match or something. And, and, but it, you know, now watching Cam Nori on on TV playing, you know, Miami third round, fourth round, it really, um, you know, it helps with your development in the moment because you're not thinking like you know too much far ahead or anything. You're just thinking, oh, how can I compete with this guy that I'm seeing at TCU? Like number one at TCU, he's a great, great player. And then you kind of like work towards that, and then next thing you know, you're you're at a level that you know maybe you you can do something in the pros as well. Um, so ha- having a guy like Vukic around, you know, I, I was practicing with him a bunch, and and again just trying to beat him and and do and trying to strive to where he's at. Um, you know, you don't realize that that's actually the level that, you know, you're striving to be a pro at that point. Because um, as you can see, he's, you know, making waves already in the pros and and a uh, great player. Um, and, yeah, I mean, anyone that comes to a program like this where uh, there's such legacy with a guy like Kevin Anderson and Rajiv Ram, like all these guys, um, you kind of just try to do what they did. Uh, Brad, our coach, can tell you, like, you know, they did this, they did that, they did this kind of training, and you try to – you don't try to maybe copy them because everyone, everyone's different, but, you know, I tried to do things that Vuki, Vuki did and, and things that I heard Kevin did and stuff. And, you know, just that kind of training will take you places. Mm-hmm. Um, no, evidently so, it's working. Yeah. Cleveland Challenger semifinal and, you know, have, that was your first career Challenger semifinal, second career quarterfinal. And for you to get those pro matches already, how valuable was that for you? And just to get that sort of pro experience, because you're playing Wolves, you're playing McNally's of the world, the, uh, you know, Andrew Fenty's guys who will, or, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of other examples of them in my head. Certainly guys, I, I think you played Nuno back in the day. And so guys, or maybe, maybe Perhaps not so. either way. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Exactly. Yeah. But you've seen those guys at the top of the college level to get to j- play a level up, to play the Bjorn for Tangelo's of the world. How great is that experience for you in your development? Um, yeah, I mean it's it's interesting because some of those pro matches are are honestly like less stressful than <laughs> yeah, some of these sure. pro match uh, like some of these college matches. Um, you know, battling it out with JJ and some of the other top guys about what a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Um and seeing him kind of skip the last year of college and go pro. I mean, he's a good friend, so I I'm, I'm very like I know exactly kind of like what what his you know plan was. Um Seeing seeing that kind of stuff was like kind of it kind of itches for me like it was like ah uh, like that's kind of almost like the next step for me a little bit like hopefully you know playing playing futures playing challengers um, not being able to do that for now like a, a little bit just because of the whole COVID stuff and and uh and you know not knowing where my level was really at after the whole quarantine and and you know I I really felt a little like lost uh, on the court. Um, Having a week like that in the pros, uh, which which you know for me is, um, you know nothing to take away from college, but for me, you know the the goal for my whole life since I was you know five six years old was to you know be a be a pro tennis player, and so having uh, some kind of success in that department and uh, it really gave me some belief, you know, for mm-hmm. what can happen in the future. Uh, because again, I, I didn't really know where my level was at. I was. You know, just playing a few matches here and there, and and it just 
it, nothing really felt, you know, in stride. And it finally, like, kind of, everything kind of clicked in, in Cleveland for me a little bit. And uh, kind of just hoping to take that forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether that's, again, in college or, or you know, in pros, whatever it is, that momentum, you can't really take that away. Mm -hmm. So Well, then, short-term, long-term, my last question for you. Obviously, you're going to get on the pro tour as soon as this season's done. But moving forward, I feel like you guys want a shot at Ohio State again this year probably more than anything I feel like that's the general consensus uh but is it Big Ten tournament than NCAAs that's the focus yeah well I mean you still got a little regular yeah, season to so go. so sure. focus definitely right now is is to finish up that regular season because I don't know again I don't know I don't even know Individual if my coaches tournament yeah yeah I don't even know if my coaches know yet but whatever it is we want to make sure that we win all the matches that we can in the Big Ten so Whatever the, the Big Ten or whoever decides who the winner is, you know, mm -hmm. we left it all out there. We said sure. this is our resume for the, for the year. Um, but then, uh, re yeah, after that, again, um, focus is definitely Big Tens. Um, and then NCAs, of course, For I, I would like to make the NCAA tournament. But, you know, with the, with the rankings, I don't <laughs> even know what, what's going to happen. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, especially it being my, my last year um, – the goal for the NCAA tournament would definitely, you know, mm -hmm. um, be to do what I can with the team. And then after that, for the individuals, if, you know, I made the semifinals like two years ago, definitely would like a little more in terms of U.S. Open uh, sure. um, chances. So, um, yeah, no. No, I mean, if you're not a top seed at the individual tournament, we're doing something wrong in college tennis. But it's been a pleasure to get to watch you compete this season. It was great to get to watch you play in Cleveland, and it's always a pleasure to get to chat. So, Alex Kovacevic, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Of course.